Tire technology has changed. It's changed a lot in the last 10, 15 years. We have tires that are now in 40 series, they're 18, 22s. We are dealing with tires that are built differently than they were 20 years ago. What we're trying to do today is give you some information so you can make a better informed decision on how you're going to do your tire repairs in your shop in the future. The tire manufacturers have joined up with a group called the Rubber Manufacturer Association, and they have established tire repair standards that are applicable as of today. We need to make sure that whenever we're doing a tire repair that it meets, meets up to the tire manufacturer recommendations so it maintains their name on it. Now there's three things they have to do, everybody. One, number one, you have to dismount the tire and inspect it. Make sure you examine the history, the any previous injuries. If it has a non-RMA repair inside the tire, then you need to discard the tire and replace it. Whenever you're doing a tire repair, you need to do a complete repair. That includes sealing the injury with a vulcanizing stem product and also a patch on the inside which is going to seal the air from leaking out. We're also limited by where I can repair that tire at. It's not what it used to be because of technology. We need to make sure that we stay within the tread belt package and that's going to be this area of the tire right here. In the old days we could always go further out into the shoulder. Today's tires seal belt package ends in this area. We're also limited to it could be no more than one quarter of one inch. And that's as big as it can be, it's one-fourth of one inch. If it's bigger than a quarter of an inch, you can't repair it. We're limited to that one-quarter inch because that's as large as the tire manufacturers feel comfortable that they will maintain their manufacturer warranties within that quarter-inch range. See, we have a nail in this tire already, and it's out in this area of the tire right here. That is a non-repairable area for that tire. In the process of doing our inspection, we found this first nail hole, which is outside the tread belt package of the tire, and in the process of doing it, what we also discovered was we have a string plug in the tire, which would also void the warranty of the tire. And the last thing we ask you to always make sure you do is use a system. What we mean by that is make sure you use the, the same product line for your, both your repair product, your chemicals, the pro entire process, because it is a chemical process that we're trying to achieve here. The tire obviously is beyond repair. It has a string plug in it from existing repair, has a nail hole outside the, the belt area of the tire, for demonstration purposes, we can use this tire to show you basically how you can repair a tire and the steps to go through. As we continue our inspection process, we discover that there's a nail right here in the belt package, and that's what we're going to repair today. We're going to go ahead and mark the injury so we know where it is. We're going to mark it with a crosshair because that way you can always find it once you pull the nail out. When you're doing your inspection and you're looking for the inside injury, make sure you have good at lighting because otherwise you can't really see what you're trying to find. Once you know where it is and you discover where the injury is, mark it so you can find it. Now that you've identified the injury, both inside and out, we're going to rotate the tire around and remove the nail and determine the angle of the injury. To do that, all we're going to do is bring it around so we know where our injury is. I prefer to work in that three to nine area because it's just more comfortable for me. And then the last thing is you've got to secure the tire. If you don't have a spreader, you can't secure the tire so it won't kick around on you. The next step we're going to do is we're going to go in there and remove the nail. We're going to remove the nail, pulling it straight out with a pair of diagonal cutters. And then we're going to use a, our probe to determine the angle of the injury and the diameter of the injury. We want to make sure the injury is straight through. That will help determine whether I use a one-piece repair or a two-piece repair. If the angle of the injury is more than 25 degrees off dead center, you should use a two-piece repair. Okay, we now know we're going to repair the tire. And when you do that, you need to use a system. And the Mighty has put together a really good system for making sure you have all the tools and the products you need. It's in a cabinet like this right here. It gives you the tools, the products, the chemicals, and all the pieces you need to completely repair the tire, including an air vac for vacuum out the inside of the tire when you're done buffing. It does come with a low speed air buffer. This low speed air buffer only turns 2,500 RPM. It does have a quick change chuck that allows you to use this one tool for all of your buffing needs, including the drilling. Before starting any work inside the tire or using any chemicals or tools in this process, please make sure you have your safety equipment. If you need prescription glasses like I do, make sure they're polycarbonate, and therefore you can see and protect your eyes. If not, have regular safety glasses always on hand. Clean the area with your pre-buff cleaner and scraper. 
We're going to go ahead and apply some product. The 491F will scrape the area. And we're trying to remove the silicone that was left when they built the tire. Do it a couple of times. And you want to remove this product from the inside of the tire. Using a low-speed buffer and the carbide cutter, we'll go in there and we'll ream the injury out and remove the damage. And from the outside also, three times. I'll remove the carbide cutter from the buffing tool and I will put the buffing rasp in there and now I'm ready to buff the inside of the tire. I'm going to buff the inside of the tire to a velvet look. Take care not to expose or damage the tire casing body plies. When you're buffing inside the tire, you need to make sure that you're down to the, the same black texture like you have here. Any little shades of gray will be the synthetic rubber and the repair unit can't bond to that. So it's imperative that you get all that gray area off that buff surface. I'll finish up this buff area now. I'm going to be using the brass bristle brush to go in there and clean the surface area to remove any rubber dust and surface contamination. So I'm left with a clean, dry surface to apply the cement to repair the tire. And we're going to apply cement to the injury channel using the probe. And that will go through the hole and coat the injury with cement. You can do that a couple of times. And that just basically puts cement in that injury channel. And then apply the cement in a stippling round action to work the cement into that rough texture. We're going to use a one piece repair on this particular unit. You want to pull this and twist and it will pop the plastic off of the poly, the poly relief cover agent. You do not want to touch this black cushion area, the shiny cushion area, because that's the natural rubber. You peel this back like so, grab onto the corner, removing the rest of the blue poly, and you now have cushion gum to bond here and cushion gum to bond here. All I need to do now, the cement's already dry. You see how flat looking it is and soaks in? We're going to insert the wire lead there. And as soon as you can grab onto the rubber part of the stem, like right there, pull it on through until you see the dimple on the inside. When you release, that will seal the injury and leave you the repair unit on the inside. Then the most important part is to take your stitcher and you'll start in the middle and you want to press firmly, pressing down and pushing that cushion gum into that texture area. This poly needs to come off. We made it tight enough that you need to pick it loose and that peels off just like this. You now have repaired the inside of the tire and you repaired the hole that went through the tire. The last step on the inside will be a repair sealer. You're going to use the Mighty Liner Sealer and that is liquid synthetic rubber and that you'll clean the brush off as it's coming out and we'll paint this around the area where you over buffed. This replaces the rubber that you buffed off with the buffing rasp and seals off the edge of the, of the patch. We need to pick up and remove all this rubber dust that's in here. So we're going to use a shop vac or an air vac. And that gets all the rubber dust out so it cannot contaminate or get into the valve stem. The last step we're going to do will be to tip the tire up. We'll roll it over and we'll trim off the excess stem on the outside of the tire. You're going to trim it off by holding it straight and flush and then snip that end so it's flush with the rest of the tread. If it is a little high, take the buffer and buff it down so it's a smooth, even texture. After you've got it buffed down so it's a smooth texture with the rest of the tread height, you are done with the repair. 
What you've accomplished in a few steps is you have sealed the injury, you have sealed the hole in the tire, you've done a complete repair using a system. And by using the Mighty system and using this type of repair, it's as simple as that. Sometimes you have to use a two-piece repair, and that's determined by the angle of the injury. Not all injuries, not all nail holes go straight through the tire. If it runs over something, it goes at an angle, you're going to have an angled injury. Sometimes you have to use a two-piece repair. When the angle of the injury is more than 25 degrees, you'll need to use this so you have a separate stem and a patch. The stem fills the hole in the tire at the angle that it was made, and then the patch will seal off the inner liner, creating a perfect seal. When you're doing a two-piece repair, you make sure you mark the injury so you can find it when you pull the nail out. If you can, mark the inside so you can see what you're dealing with and you can find it again. You're going to remove the, the nail that caused the damage and remove it the same way it went in. You'll take your awl and you're going to run that awl through that hole and leave it set and that will show you the angle that you have to rep repair the tire at. You can tell by the angle that we have over 25 degrees. That means we're going to be using a two-piece repair where we fill the injury and then we trim off the excess of the inside and we put a patch in there. That gives us the ability to fill the hole and still seal the inner liner. Once we're to this point, we can go ahead and take the carbide cutter, round this injury off, and then we can go ahead and, and fill the injury, basically. Now that you've reamed out the injury, three times from the inside, three times from the outside, giving you a nice, clean, round hole. Now what you do next would be to clean the area with your, your pre-buff cleaner and your, your scraper to remove the excess silicones that are around that area. So when you get ready to buff that area, you're not going to be trying to buff all the silicones. We're going to go ahead and, we've already done that, we're going to go ahead and get in the, uh, the cement into the channel area and we're going to pull this, the repair unit through and that's going to seal that, belt, that hole in the belt package. To do that is very simple. You take your, your awl, your probe that you have, and you coat the hole from the inside, just like this. We're going to go around, we'll do some more cement right from this side out. Same angle. So you have cement on both ends. You peel off the blue layer, like this right here. Slide this from the inside out. Take your pliers, grab onto the rubber part of the stem, and then pull it through until you have about a quarter of an inch on the inside, about that much, and you're going to have some of it on, out that, on there. That means that you've now sealed the hole that went through the tire. Once we're to this point, we can move the tire around where it's a more comfortable position to work in. We're going to snip off the inside excess and then we're going to buff that area down to one surface area. We've moved the tire now to a more comfortable position to work on the tire and finish the repair process. We have snipped off the excess stem on the inside. It's cleaned. We're going to get ready to buff that area down so it will be one surface for the patch to bond to. Once we got done buffing, we're going to go ahead and take our brass brush like we did before. That cleans the surface area removes any rubber dust from that surface so that the patch can bond to a clean, dry rubber surface. Now that we have all the residue off that surface area, we'll take our cement, we're going to apply cement so it soaks down to that area, and we can apply the patch, and then we're just virtually done with the repair. So you take your cement, and again, you can make sure you clean off the brush. You don't have to have a lot of it on there. You're going to apply the cement to the surface area where the patch is going to be applied. Once you have your a cement applied, you go ahead and get your patch. It's a radial patch designed to be used on a radial tire. You'll peel off this cushion, this poly on the back of it, so that you can get to it without touching the black cushion gum. Peeling that off, your cement's already dry, so all you need to do now is lay that patch on the surface area centered over the, the nail hole that was there, and lay that down. Just by pressing it down with your hand, and then you want to come back with the stitcher, which would give it the pressure you need to force that cushion gum into that rough texture. I am pressing the patch into the cushion area, which is going to bond itself to the tire. Once I've stitched it down adequately, so it looks like it's pretty well loosened up, you'll take your 
all and pop the seal loose. That will allow this poly to come off of here. And you now have repaired the tire and the hole in the tire. Remove any traces of poly. Once we finish this off right in here, we'll go through like we always do. We'll take our vacuum. We'll vacuum up all the debris inside the tire so it's a clean, good casing. We'll trim off the excess stem on the outside of the tire, make sure it's level with the tread. And now we have sealed the injury. We have prepared the inner liner and we've done a complete permanent repair using a two-piece repair. So whether I'm using a one-piece repair or a two-piece repair, you have to have the same process end result, which is a complete permanent repair. To do that, you have to do three things. One, you always have to dismount and inspect to make sure the tire is repairable. If you don't do that, you have no way of knowing. Number two, fill the injury to keep moisture out. And number three, sealing the inner liner with a repair unit to prevent air loss. And the last thing we ask you to do is if you can't do it right, please don't do it. Thank you so much, and we'll see you again.